So here we want to solve for y. And so what we want to do is we want to get any terms that have y on one side and terms that don't have y on the other side. Um, the first step we would normally do is get rid of any fractions if we need to and do any distributed if we need to, but here we don't need to on these problems. So we just go ahead and we're going to subtract ax from both sides. And when we subtract ax from both sides, on the left side we get by is equal to c minus ax. Now that we have that, we are going to solve for y, and we notice that right here b is multiplied times y, so to undo that multiplication, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by b. So over here on the left side, the b's reduce, and we end up being left with y is equal to c minus ax over b. And we go ahead and leave it like this, and that is our answer we solved for y. On this next one, we want to solve for c. In this case, we do have a fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply, since we have a fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by the common denominator. In this case, that common denominator is 4. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4 to eliminate that fraction. And that's what we do when we have denominators. So this simplifies. So on the left side, we just have 4a. On the right side, this 4 canceled, so we just have a plus b plus c plus d. I know we're in the middle of it here, but notice there is our two A's here. This is a capital A, and the other one's a lowercase a. If they're distinctly written like that in the example or in the original, we, those are different variables, so don't combine those. Now, in the really the final step here, we want to solve for C, and we notice that A, B, and D are all added on the side that C is in. So we can subtract each of those and we subtract it from the right side in order to get C by itself, and we also subtract it from the left side. On the left side here, there are no like terms, so we'll just leave it as 4a minus lowercase a minus b minus d, and that is equal to C. And a lot of times we like to write the C on this side, so C equals 4 capital A minus lowercase a minus b minus D, and that would be solving for C. Our next one, we want to solve for V. Notice here, here's our V, and that's the only V. There's no fractions we have to deal with. So really, we want to get this term by itself. The easiest way to do that would be to go ahead and add 16T squared to both sides. Remember, we want to get rid of what's added or subtracted first. And so we have h plus 16t squared is equal to vt. And again, solving for v, we're going to, we see v is multiplied times t, so we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by t. And we get v equals, and now we have a t here. We don't have a t in both of them. So we can't reduce these t's um, because there's an addition here. That's a misuse of simplifying or reducing. So we cannot reduce when there's a, an addition here in the numerator. So we have h plus 16t squared over t. And we could have written v equals, but just wrote that as equal to v. We're going to use this scenario for the next few questions. It says there were three different color marbles in the bag, the ratio of red to blue to yellow. So this is actually a ratio of three things right in a row. So this represents our red. The next one represents our blue. So this is blue. And the last one represents the yellow. And so we can work with this and
figure out this problem. Uh, it's six to five to four. What's the ratio of blue to total? Well, we don't have a total written here, but if we, since there's three different colors, here we have six, red, five, blue, and four, so we can add those up. Six plus five plus four is 15, and so we recognize we have a total, and this is only for our ratios. There's not a total of 15, but compared to the other ones, it would be 15. So what's the ratio of blue to the total? Well, that would be five to 15, and when we're simple, or when we're writing ratios, we always want to reduce them if possible, and we notice that we can reduce this, the numerator and denominator, both can be divided by five, and so we get one to three is our ratio of blue to total. Our next one says the ratio of red to yellow. Red to yellow, well that's probably a little simpler than the first one. Here's our red compared to our yellow, so we can say, well that is six to four, and again we want to reduce that uh, we can reduce by two, and that's three over two. So our, our ratio of red to yellow is three over two. And now we have this, pro this actual question. Uh, there are 90 yellow marbles. How many reds are there? So we want to take the ratio of yellow to red. So yellow is four. So we're thinking we have the yellows compared to the reds. And so that's the ratio we're going to be looking at. So we see that's four, that's our yellows to red, uh, which is six. So four to six. And we can now make a proportion equals. Now we know there's 90 yellows. So we have yellow in the numerator here. So I'm going to put yellow in the numerator up here over what we're trying to find, we can say x, so x equals the number of reds. And we can solve that. Well, notice we can reduce this, which we did before on the earlier problem, we reduced 4 and 6. And so when we solve a proportion, we can cross multiply. So we have 2x equals 3 times 90. If you multiply that out, you get 270. And then dividing both sides by 2, you find your number of reds, you get x is equal to 135. So there's 135 reds in that case. <clears throat>